Hey everybody, it's Mike AK, that resale guy. Uh, today I'm going over antique booth recap for 2020. You're not gonna see my face today really because uh, we're gonna be looking here at uh, my numbers for the booth last year. Well, here, look, I'm here, hi. So what we're gonna do is go over a month by a month recap of 2020 sales from my antique booth. Now I do talk about it probably not quite as much as I should because antique booths are a great way to make some semi-passive income as I always say. The number of hours that I put into the booth each week and each month is very limited. I probably make two to three trips per month to my antique booth and probably spend maybe an hour to maybe two hours tops each time prepping and getting items ready to go out to my booth. That's, you know, getting stuff priced ahead of time, shrink wrapped, anything like that before I head out to my booth. So the number of hours that I've put into my antique booth is limited versus the return that I've gotten. So I do want to show you what I sold month by month and then what my total final sales were for the year. Now, obviously 2020 was a very challenging year for anything retail. Luckily here in Arizona, my antique booth was only closed for about six weeks. And they also did a tiered rent increase as we kind of came back from the pandemic where we were paying a lessened amount of rent for like six weeks after they reopened. So that helped all of us dealers as well. My antique booth is at the Brass Armadillo in Avondale, Arizona. They do have other locations and I highly recommend the Brass Armadillo if you are looking into getting an antique booth. They uh, are very professional and I've been there for quite a few years now and have been uh, very happy with the success I've had there. So yeah, let's get into it. This is gonna be a fairly quick video today, but uh, I did wanna go over these numbers with you so I can share some of the successes that I've had there and maybe uh, you know some of you wanna get into an antique booth. So we're gonna go month by month here. I'm gonna kinda just show my uh, spreadsheet here that I keep. So basically what I do is when I get my monthly invoices, I break it down into three categories. Items that I bought through general thrifting. Collectibles are items that I've bought through my sports contacts, whether we sometimes have a local sports auction here or just some of the contacts that I have that bring items to me directly and that I buy them. And then sports cards. And these are single individual sports cards, not boxes of cards, not card sets. Just single individual cards that I sell in my booth anywhere from a dollar to probably up to about five dollars is the normal that I sell them for. So I like breaking those down. It let me lets me know how I'm doing each of the categories and if you know anything's lacking or doing better than others, then I need to obviously focus on that area a little more. So here we go. We got into it. We got January here. You know, I'm not gonna go over each of these numbers totally, but you can see here the thrift goods, the collectibles, the cards. You can see how much I paid for rent. Now they charge you for every two weeks of rent and my rent did increase last year. So it went up another $3.50 per two week period. You can see the fees, they do charge 10% fees plus a credit card processing fee, similar like you would pay with a PayPal fee. And then there's some other little fees we pay for insurance, we pay for security, and that's like 250 per pay period. And then you can see what my gross amount was for that two week period over there. So you, See a little over 500 the first two weeks, a little bit under 500 the first two weeks, and that gives me January's total here of $1,039. Yeah, I know this is real professional with my sticky notes here, but that's how we're doing it today. So yeah, let's scroll down and look at February. All right, February, if you look across the board on all the numbers, very similar overall. Uh, card sales about the same. Collectibles were more than the thrift goods were that month. And a lot of times that just depends on what deals I've been getting through my sports sources. So if I've been buying a lot of sports cards, sports card sets, action figures, that type of stuff, well then obviously my collectibles is gonna be higher than thrift goods. So uh, you can see 463 and then 533, very similar totals. And that gives us a grand total of, look down here, 996. So just under a thousand dollars for the two week period or for the four week period. All right, now we're getting to March. Now we're getting to where things kind of were uh, starting to shut down across the country. Let's see what happened. Okay, March, which was spring training time. Uh, that's uh, usually a time in Arizona where my antique booth takes off. A lot of visitors come in for spring training out here in Arizona and my sports collectibles do really good as well, the cards. So a lot of people did come into Arizona for spring training and unfortunately they canceled it after about a week. No fans were allowed. And you can see by the increase in my totals, look at the card totals. I went up from doing like 35 and $40 for every two weeks. I went up to 126 and 151 and my collectibles totals were pretty high as well. So you can see it was a pretty good month for me. I did 650 and then what was that? 680 some. So obviously it was a pretty good month. Come down here, $1,348 
and March has always been my strongest month or one of my strongest months at my antique booth. Moving on, April. Uh-oh, yep, that's what happened. They closed down. So the Brass Armadillo closed down due to what was going on in the world here, and we had no sales in April. Now, they didn't charge us any rent, so it was just a complete wash. They did give dealers an opportunity to go in there and take out any inventory that they wanted to because they did not know at that time how long things were going to be shut down. I did not. I just left my items in there and uh, was hoping that they'd be open pretty soon. All right, let's get to May. All right, we get to May. Still the first couple of weeks, they're closed. And I think they were closed one week of this next period. So I think that week ending 516 is only a one week sales period. It might even have only been a one weekend. It was pretty limited how much they were open. And then you can see things kind of got back to normal there at the end of the month. I think people were really looking forward to kind of getting out of the house again, doing some shopping, and it definitely paid off for me. And you can see there were three different weeks in May. It's just kind of how the months run. You will have two months a year where you'll have three pay periods, which means you also have to pay rent three times that month because it's not a monthly rent. You're basically paying rent for a two week period. So you can see here again, my collectible sales were really strong. And look at these card sales, almost $80 each of the two week periods. So look at the totals, pretty good. Come down here, just broke a thousand again, 1,047 and some change. So getting into the summer here, things are starting to get hot. Let's see how June was. Okay, we're getting to June. All the winter visitors have left. It's getting hot, but a lot of things were closed down still. So I think people were still doing a lot of shopping. And again, you can see my, my sales total. Normally summer is slower here in Arizona, but again, because uh, a lot of things were closed down, they were open. So people were out there spending money. And I had another really good month. You can see both thrift goods, collectibles, and cards, all really strong totals. 584 for the first two weeks, 713. So now that's my highest week so far, or my highest two week period. And that gives us a grand total of $1,298 for June. All right, moving on to July here and sort of about the same here. You can see consistent uh, thrift goods sales, collectibles still very strong. Card slacked off a little bit there that second week, had a really strong uh, first two weeks. Get down to the totals, 539, 512. So we still broke that $1,000 total, 1,051.78. All right, August. Now we're getting to the hottest time of the year here in Arizona. August is pretty miserable here. It's hot, it's humid. And uh, this totals, I don't know if that's why, but this was my worst month of the year other than the non-open month. So you can see consistent in the thrift goods, sports goods or collectibles, still pretty decent. Okay totals with cards. I still did over $100 just in single cards for the month. But you can see both totals, 429, 425, both very consistent. But I didn't break that $1,000 threshold for a grand total of $854.90. All right, we're hitting September and uh, sales were really strong in September. Uh, I don't know if I did a lot of good buying that month or what exactly happened, but you can see strong thrift goods, strong sports collectibles, cards really strong, had uh, another $129 two week period. You can see both two week periods over $600, gave me a grand total of $1,273.26. Now we're hitting October. October is the start of Q4. So we're, I'm hoping that uh, Christmas sales are gonna start picking up. The uh, antique booth did really good about promoting local sales, supporting your local businesses, supporting small businesses and all of that. So you can see here, this was another three kind of pay period month here for October. Now, the middle period was the worst of the two, but uh, still overall sales were pretty good. Card sales were down a little bit. You see 41, 65, 54, still not too bad for the month. That's $150 just in single card sales. Totals over here, 480, 465, and 523 for my three pay periods. And that gave me a pretty good total. So far, my best of the year, 1469, 79. Right, let's get to November now. Now we're really thinking about Christmas and sales are going strong. And the second half of November definitely showed. You can see here how things totally picked up. Sports collectibles. Now I did start buying a lot of stuff online, a lot of boxes of cards, started really pushing the sales there. $467 in sports collectible sales and cards were strong as well. $131 in card sales for the month. Look at these totals over here, 366. And now we got my best two week total, 841.90. That gave me a grand total of $1,210.89. All right, let's see how December and Christmas time went. Here it is, just like it should be, one of my strongest months of the year and one of my biggest two-week periods of the month. So 
you can see here, let's just look the week before Christmas. You can see this pay period ended on the 26th. So that led right up until Christmas time, 469 in thrift goods, almost $400 in collectibles. Look at that single card total, $171.61 in sports cards. Kind of crazy for a two week period selling essentially dollar in, in dollar fifty cards. And grand totals over here, 513. My biggest two week period, 1,30.71 for a grand total of $1,544.61. So uh, really good total numbers for the year. I'm really happy how it went. What was the grand total on all that? 12 months. $13,136.51. This was a record year for me at my antique booth. 13,000 was the best I've ever done out there. That's over $1,000 a month, right around that 1,100 per month if you look at the average. Uh, so happy about that and excited for what 2020 will bring me out at my booth. All right, that's it for today. If you've been thinking about an antique booth, have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And uh, I think that's it for today. So hit that subscribe if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up. And I always appreciate your comments down below. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.